lives. Your lives. Hey y'all, I am James Wright, and welcome to my shop. And it is very good to be back. So we didn't do a live last week, so I'm sorry to everyone who uh, was missing us, but we were actually down in Florida. It was their first time to get away in over a year. Um, for some reason, I don't know why. But, uh, so we are back and uh, and back at it. So um, tonight we're gonna have kind of a fun time. It is our normal uh, monthly Q and A. So if you have any questions, throw those in the chats, and Sarah will uh, collate them. If you are watching this recorded, then there is uh, all of the timestamps down below where you can see all of the questions listed out. So you can jump straight to anything you want to see. Well, um, so yes, um, <laughs> there there is no uh, no bench update. Uh, because we've been out of town, um, and uh, yeah, not too much else going on. There's a, a few other new things in the background that some people might notice, um, but uh, yeah, life is good now that we're we're back. So um, let's go ahead and jump in. What uh, what's the first question we have? Um, I caught her off guard. Yeah, that's how you married me. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Hey, you want to marry me? <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, I guess. <laughs> I think the actual answer was sure. <laughs> anyway, sidetrack, sidetrack. Um, King Malo asked, is it possible to make a wood screw using a regular nut? Just bought a two centimeter nut to see if I can make this happen. I think I'll need to buy some metal files to see if I can make this work. Hmm. Um, two centimeter, that's not very big. Uh, it's only like a, a three quarter. That's, um, yeah, that, that, you, you could do that. That would be a lot of work to file it just right in order to make it bite and actually cut it. Um, yeah, and then getting the chips out of there would be, it would be an absolute pain. Um, so theoretically, it could work, but you'd be better off actually making a, um, a thread. Do I have one? No, I don't have one here. You actually make a, a threading box or a, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's basically, if you take a, um, it, it's basically a chisel that comes in and just cuts it. And so you actually have a shape that fits it. So usually what you do is you get the, the threaded rod that you want. So a bolt that is the size you want. So a two centimeter bolt and you cut grooves in the bolt and that then becomes a tap that you can then create your threading box out of. Um, and so it's usually easier to make that and that way the chips actually get ejected out the side of the box. Uh, theoretically, it's probably possible to do it with a nut, though it would be very, very difficult. Um, yeah, it would, I would definitely, uh, one of the best videos uh, that I've seen on it is, actually Roy Underhill did it in the, wood, in the Woodwright shop. Um, that was back in like, 2000, 2001, something like that. Um, I'd have to look that one up. And that's a video I've wanted to do for a while, it's actually going through that. But yeah, that would be an interesting one to, to try out. I've never ever tried that. But I would definitely say, uh, look at making a thread cutting box. Uh, it's a little bit simpler and that's more designed for cutting threads in a bolt. What's next? I was just realizing that you're like back in 2001 and that's like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, 20 years ago is the 80s, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's 40 years ago. I know. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to ask a question, then I'll come back to getting caught up. Uh, Tom Engel asks, it has been three years since your bench, since you built your bench. What are your thoughts on bench vices and what would you change? Uh, I actually have a video from a year ago, and I did a two-year review of the bench and talked about all the individual vices. So if you want to see more detail, um, take a look at that. Um, but yeah, I actually went through and, and talked over, it's been two years. Um, I get the question a lot of why don't I use the leg vices more, and it's because I, I love an end vice face vice. I use this constantly. It is my workflow. That's not for everyone. There's a lot of people who would absolutely love to use the leg vices more. And so it really depends on your workflow and the way you work. Uh, most right-handed people actually work on the other end of the bench. Uh, but I find I like working around this end of the bench. And I find I work actually on the end of the bench just as much as I do behind the bench. Um, and, and having this, this long face vise with the dog holes off it is a multifunctional vise that I really love and I use it all the time. Um, now, the leg vices, 
if I had to pick one of the two, my wooden screw or my Hovart or Vice, 50 uh, 50. I think I would have to go with the wooden screw just because I like the aesthetics of it, I like the function of it, and it's not that much more, uh, that much slower. But the Hovart or Vice is really nice, very quick and efficient. So if you're looking for something that's just efficient and go at it, the Hovart or Vice is what you want. Uh, if you want something that's a little bit more historical and, and fun and a little, takes a little more time, then the wood screw is the way to go. Um, do I use one of them over the other? No. Um, I tend to use both just because I show both types and I like to show different ways of doing things. Um, but 90% of the time, I'm using my end vice, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, definitely go take a look at the video. It was from a year ago where I did the, the two-year review of it. What's next? Okay. And James Lentner asked, what's the difference between 01 steel versus 012 steel? I honestly have no idea. Okay. Um, I, 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 people espouse a lot of um, difference in the different types of steel. But in most of the testing I've done, and particularly in the chisel test and the plain iron test, the type of steel has very little difference in its durability and longevity. Uh, it has more to do with the actual tempering that went into it. You can take uh, you can take a really good steel, and if it's not tempered well, it's going to be an absolute trash. And you can take a pretty bad steel and temper it well and do much better than that really good steel. Uh, so it really comes down to the, the actual heat treat that goes into it. Um, and that's, that's far, far more important than the, the actual steel that's used itself. Um, there's a lot of arguments that go into O1 versus A2 versus PMV11, and I, I don't really espouse to one over the other. Um, with the exception of, of PMV11 for plain irons, uh, that really showed a, a decent chunk a little bit better, um, though the, a lot of the A2s were standing up well. Um, though the difference between subcategories of A2, pff, uh, that's, that's really, uh, you, people will argue about that, but it's not worth arguing about. It's not going to make any difference because there's micro changes in the, the heat treat can change the crystal structure, and that's going to give you very, very different uh, um, temperaments of steel. So don't, don't worry about that too much. What's next? Okay, sorry, I'm trying to warm up. <laughs> the house was in like 55 while we were gone. It's it was still 45 while we were gone. <laughs> and the basement down here was cold. We actually had two pipes uh, freeze because, yeah, yet today it actually got up to a positive temperature. <laughs> so <laughs> it was kind of nice. We got down to negative 15 at one point while we were gone. So it's got cold out. Oh, shucks, we missed it. Um, let's see, Alex, what did Alex say? Does boiled linseed oil smell the same as regular? What nope. a about polymerized linseed oil. I got tried and true Danish oil and doesn't have much smell. Is it normal? Um, well, okay, there's a bunch of different things there. Uh, polymerized linseed oil is boiled linseed oil. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to make it polymerize faster. Um, actually, polymerized linseed oil is stuff that has been hardened. It's actually cured and, and finished. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a final finish. It is fully polymerized. Um, the polymerization is going from the, the liquid to the solid. Um, and so it's something different. Uh, boiled linseed oil does smell different than raw linseed oil, um, especially if it is treated with chemical dryers. If it is actually just raw boiled linseed oil, like the homemade stuff that I make, uh, the tried and true Danish oil, which <laughs> drives me bonkers that they call it Danish oil because it gets really confusing because it's actually boiled linseed oil. It's not actually Danish oil, but they wanted to call it Danish oil because it sells better. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the Danish oil that tried and true has is a, um, is a, a raw linseed oil that has been boiled and is much faster to polymerize. And it smells a little bit closer to raw linseed oil, but it still has its own smell. Um, and that's one of the, the ways you can tell if a oil is a pure boiled linseed oil or boiled linseed oil with chemical dryers in it. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, it does, it does smell very differently. I think that answered all your questions. You can't smell anything anyway. <laughs> Truth. 
<laughs> I never know if I had COVID. <laughs> you should open the cans and I do the sniff test. Like, come on, let's be real here. He eats foods because of texture, not because of taste. Who's Strange man, but I knew that. What's next? <laughs> John Day asks, when are we going to see some more spring pole lathe projects? Um, no idea. Spring? Um, I don't do a lot of turning. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it in the spring. <laughs> Sorry. Um, turning oh. just isn't my intrigue. I, 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 I rather an octagonal shape than a turned shape, and so that's why I like to actually plane and chisel them down rather than turn them. Um, spring pole is a lot of fun, but it takes up a lot of space in the shop. It's actually broken down in, in my lumber rack right now. Um, I am wanting to make a, uh, an outdoor shop and do a draw knife and a spring pole lathe and have those built out there. And I'd probably do a few green projects. Uh, that would be kind of interesting, but that's a summer thing. And here in the winter, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so you're probably not going to see the spring pole until July, if that. Um, though I didn't pull it out at all this last year, so yeah, it's uh, it's not something I, I use that much, especially with my my uh, my flywheel lathe. Um, I'll probably do more turning on that than I will on a spring pole. Yes. What's next? Zach Dell Production asked, "How long do you feel it took you to get to really get good at hand tool woodworking?" such as efficient, precise, et cetera. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a, yeah. I, I do not consider myself a, a, an accomplished fine tool, fine woodworker. Um, I am a guy in the shop having fun, and I try to, the whole idea of Wood by Right is sharing the joy of woodworking. It's not really teaching how to do fine woodworking. I want to show what I have learned, which is you know, a step from the next person. Um, and every skill is different. Um, you know, sharpening is one of those things that it's probably going to take most people a year or two to get decent at freehand sharpening. Um, uh, following a line with a saw, um, some people might be able to get that in a couple months, and some people it takes a couple years. Uh, every every skill is a little bit different, and that's one of the things about hand tools is that there is no fast track to it. The only way you're going to learn is to do it. And you're gonna mess up a lot, and there's gonna be a lot of mistakes. But that's that's what you gotta do. So if you if you want to get better at it, be willing to make mistakes. Be willing to mess up. Be willing to go off the line. Be willing to have to redo it because it's not what you wanted. Um, that's just part of the process. And, and learn to enjoy the process, and realize that when you make a mistake, oh well. That's the great thing about woodworking is you can always do it over again. Uh, yeah, it might take a little more time, but then you enjoy it, then it's more time you get to have fun. <laughs> but yeah, every, every step is, is, is different. Um, some things um, go pretty quickly. Chopping up mortises, most people can catch on to that very quickly. Dovetails, most people can catch on to that in 20, 30 different um, dovetail ends. Um, getting to perfection is a lifetime. Uh, perfection is a direction, not a location. And so at what point on that continuum do you say, yes, this is an accomplished woodworker? Um, everyone is going to say it's just a little farther down the line. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you just never get to. So enjoy the process and it will make everything that much better. What's next? Um, hang on. I'm hanging. <sighs> and Janet Horn wants to know if you can tint BLO. Yes, yeah, you can. Um, uh, I've used uh, transtent dye, um, and you're basically making a stain. I mean, oil-based stain is an oil that polymerizes with a dye or a tint. So, yeah. um, I like to use a transtent dye. I mix that in. I've done that a few times, although um, I tend to do that with epoxies. Um, I haven't done it with PLO in a while. But yeah, mix it with whatever dye or tint as long as it, uh, as long as it will suspend in an oil. Good to go. Let's see. They are telling me to turn up the sound. I've turned it up as much as I can. Maybe I'll. Yeah, I've got to figure out what's up with that. Because, turn my microphone. Um, too. I think my switchboard is dying, and so the sound gets lower and lower and lower. Um, but I can't turn it up any more than this. This is absolute max volume. So, sorry. We can just shout at you. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 
I'm a little slap happy tonight. Sorry, folks. Um, Isaac H. I just bunch a I just got a bunch of auger off eBay. Have you done a video on sharpening? And a couple have damaged threads from improper sharpening. Can these be fixed or recut? Uh, I actually have like three or four different videos on how to sharpen an auger. Um, I think I have one called how to sharpen augers, another one how to sharpen drill bits. Um, and yeah, um, I've done a few of them over the years, although I might need to do another one. It's been two or three years since I've done one of those. Um, now when you, when you look at an auger bit, let me actually grab one of these down here. You want to actually work on, oh, where are they? I'm trying to find one that's loose. There you go. You want to actually work on the flutes, not on the snail. Um, focus this in. There we go, focused. So the problem is um, the snail, the this, this screw up in here, you really can't sharpen that. If the tip breaks off, it's pretty much trash. Uh, if, the, if the tip is gone, this is it, it's it's not going to work well. Yes, you can clean up if, if it's just the tiniest bit off the tip. You can sharpen that with a uh, with a saw file, a triangular file. Um, but generally, if the tip is gone, the whole thing is trash. Um, you're going to be working on the cutting edge here and on the spur. Never ever ever sharpen the outside, otherwise you're going to be shrinking the diameter. You always sharpen the inside of the spur. And then on the cutting blade, you always file the underside here. Don't file the top. Um, filing the underside gives you your, your cutting edge. Um, so I've got a couple of videos on how to do that and different types of files for that. But yeah, if the, if the snail or the, the screw is, um, if it's broken, they're pretty much trash. Um, and that's one of the things when, when, you, when people buy auger bits that are just random, um, usually it's like one out of ten that are good. Um, so when you're first getting started and you're buying a whole bunch of them, you're probably going to run into several that are bad uh, and you end up buying multiple buckets of them. Uh, I, usually I get most of mine at like estate sales where I'll get a bucket of 20 and I'll go through it and three or four of them are good and the rest are trash. But uh, it's pretty common. What's next? Okay, hang on. If we don't get to questions tonight, um, I'm sorry, because it looks like we're getting quite a few. I think um, we're doing okay at the moment, but we'll okay. see if it picks up. But if anyone does throw up a super chat, we will answer that. <laughs> Raz Diskin asks, literally depressed about not being able to properly take logs to lumber. Any tips regarding your video? Can you read that once more? The, he, struggling to take logs to lumber. Do you have any tips um, from when I guess you did a video on it? Uh, well, I did a video on, um, on riving lumber. Um, so actually going at it with, uh, with a fro, axe, and wedges, and then flattening it down. Um, and that's a lot of work. It's, it's, it's the best lumber in the world because it's riven rather than cut. So you're actually following the grain. Um, but it's the most wasteful way of doing it. Uh, you will end up losing more than half of the log to dross. Um, but it gives you the most stable, the best, the highest quality lumber out there. Um, and, and tips, it's really one of those things that it, there's a lot of skill involved in that. You're going to mess it up several times to begin with. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you've just got to, you, you've got to learn the skill. So you've got you to struggle through it and eventually you'll, you'll catch on to the little things that you do here and there, muscle memory that you just, the only way to get it is to do it. Um, but most of the time when making lumber, you cut it. And that's where I would use a, you know, a big frame saw or a pit saw or um, even just you know, a decent hand saw um, can do it. Um, when I did the, uh, I have a video on um, making um, veneer. So I actually took half a log and cut veneer slices off of it. I did that with a hand saw and a frame saw. Um, but, uh, it's the exact same process, just you make it thicker than veneer. Yeah, I don't know if there's any particular tip to it other than Practice. bash your head against the wall and eventually <laughs> it comes through. <laughs> What's next? 
<sighs> Kokona asks, I feel like I'm spending a lot on tools, but it's all the starting tools, such as a sharpening stone. When does this end, and what are your woodworking-related expenses right now? <laughs> it never ends. Um, yeah, buying tools is, is a serious rabbit hole that, uh, um, you know, once, once you have a, a half-inch chisel and a way to sharpen it, everything else is just for fun. Um, I mean, you can do almost everything with this. It's just, this takes a lot more time. Um, so then you start getting into, you know, a plane and a saw. And then, you know, this saw doesn't work as well for this procedure, so you need another saw. And this plane would be nicer if it were longer. And then you start getting into, oh, but I want to make this joint, and that makes it easier with this plane. And everything from that point on is just making things easier. Um, so you, you don't need anything else but as woodworkers we all need that next tool um, so it's one of those things that you know when I first got started I had twelve dollars and I bought you know a plane a set of chisels and a, a junk handsaw um, and things went on from there I had like uh, yeah when we first got started my budget was twenty five dollars a month uh, that I spent on tools and in the course of a year, I had a full shop worth of all the tools I needed. Um, now I spend way more than that. That's way not what you're that. supposed to say. Their spouses may be listening. <laughs> um, it's minimal, minimal. Yeah, no. It, it, <laughs> yeah. It, you just it, get it, your spouse into woodworking and then, <laughs> and occasionally buy them whatever they want to do. Oh, here, babe, here's a new tool for you. Can I use it occasionally? <laughs> like loot anime boxes and things like that because they're dorks too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it really comes down to you don't need anything more than just a couple basic tools. But all the other tools make every step easier. So usually I tell people, once you have the basic tools down, you know, you have a set of auger bits, you have a saw, a plane, chisels, and a mallet. Don't buy anything else unless you need it to build something. Once you figure out what your project is, then your project will tell you what tools do you need to make that project. Um, don't go buy tools because, oh, I'm going to need that sometime in the future. No, buy the tools that you need for the project you're building. Don't just buy tools to buy tools. Um, I have an excuse that I can buy tools because I have a video. Now I can explain what this tool is all about and how to use it. Um, but do I need it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I can buy it because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> What's next? See, Kenny and Janet Horn asked for finish on a wall hanging tool cabinet. Is Rubio Monaco a good choice or is it overkill? Yeah, Rubio Monaco is great. Um, Rubio Monaco is not a, a film finish, and I love that about it. it you really get the, the feel of the wood. It is the closest thing to a boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish. It does still have protection to it. My table, my dining room table is made of, is, is finished with Rubio Monaco, and it's an incredibly durable finish. I mean, the kids on it every day <laughs> spilling who knows what on there, and glue and crafts, and uh, it, it holds up really, really well. And so yes, it would be a good finish for that. Uh, it is a very expensive finish though very expensive um, so yeah uh, one I want to do more with is actually um, uh, Osmo uh, it is a little bit cheaper and it is a very very similar finish um, so I, I might be playing with that some more but everything else in that, in that just depends on, on your, your finish you know if you use a polyurethane or a shellac or something of that nature you're going to be building up a surface on there so there's actually a film finish whereas Rubio Monocoat is not a film finish. You, you see the wood itself. So it just depends on taste. Is it overkill? No. But it is if you want something less. <laughs> What's next? Well, isn't Rubio Monocoat one of your favorite anyways? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. it is my, my favorite finish. It just I'll never tell you not amazing. to use it. Incredibly easy. We've already established you don't smell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you might smell, but <laughs> then you shower. Um, question, Tiny Woodshop. Did you paint your plain tilt holders? Uh, no, no, these are actually uh, 3D printed. Because um, uh, one of the things that I had a problem with is all of my planes, the toes, have a slightly different thickness. And so I'm playing with these 
uh, that are actually 3D printed for the profile. Um, and so each one of these have a different depth of step on there to hold different thicknesses of toes. So I'm actually um, playing with different, uh, uh, different 3D prints on that. And I really like the blue. It just, it just sets it all off. I thought about doing them on all different colors, uh, but I think that would be a little bit too much. So, yes, <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> and this slot here is saved. Someday there will be a number one that will go right here. Right That's there? where I say small things are worth a lot more. <laughs> that was not what I was thinking, but okay. <laughs> That's why you're worth so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice try. Um, let's see. Pacific Coast Piper. James, what is your favorite bigger hand saw for rough cutting? I hate regular panel saws because they flop. Um, I actually like my buck saw. Um, I do it for a lot of the... Uh, I'm at the work getting that out. It is great for doing the rough, just cutting stuff to a general size. Went out. Um, and you can pick these up for dirt cheap. Um, I, I usually pay five to ten bucks a piece for them. Um, and they usually require a little bit of cleanup. But this will cut incredibly fast. It's done with a cross cut blade um, with uh, zero rake. Um, uh, not right. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Teeth point straight down, so you're cutting the same forward and backward, and it just it rips through boards incredibly fast. Doesn't give you a clean cut, but it will give you a very good rough cut very, very quickly. Um, so I use these quite a bit for that. Um, but the next step up, cross cutting, then, is a panel saw. At least in my shop. But yeah, a good buck saw does does great for cross cutting. Very very quickly. <laughs> Although I have seen some videos of people using a, a cross cut saw. Uh, though these big teeth, you need to have a really thick board, otherwise they'll, they'll catch on it. So. What's next? Let's see. John Day asked, "Are you going to get into pole saws more often?" Um, not right now. Uh. When, when I do that, I actually want to, one of these days, I want to actually dive into actual Japanese woodworking and do it on the floor with a Japanese style bench and, and actually do the whole, the whole shebang. Um, I don't like using pole saws, I, I, at least at, at a stand up bench. And the, the function is just, it is very inefficient um, and it's a whole other system to learn. Uh, the nice thing about Western saws is they're very, very easy to control. The downside to Western saws is they're very, very easy to over control. And that's what most people have the problem with them is they go all over the line trying to follow it. Um, and you, you really only need the slightest touch on them to make them go if they're set up right. Um, whereas with the Japanese saw, once it's going, it goes right down that line. Um, and so if you start it off the line, you end up off the line. Um, it's very, very difficult to make them turn because the the active teeth are on the other side of the board. Um, and so functional wise, they are great for the beginning woodworker because you can over control it without it doing weird things. Um, and that makes it very, very easy for a beginner to learn them. However, functional wise and body mechanics wise at a stand up bench, they are less efficient. Uh, so it's, it's kind of that trade off. Yeah. But one of these days I do want to actually get into doing real Japanese woodworking and their methods and, um, and actually go into that more, but someday down the road. <laughs> I've been saying that for years and I probably will be saying it for years more. It's only been like four or five years. It's not like it's been 20. No. What's next? Uh, Dennis Miko, what type of drawer slides do you use? <clears throat> and how do you mount them in a cabinet? I do not use drawer slides. I, I eschew metal drawer slides. I don't like them. They take up space. You put drawer slides in there, you're just you're removing drawer width. Um, I, I like to have wood on wood. It, it, I know it sounds, <gasps> it doesn't work very well. It does. It works really, really well. Um, all of the drawers that I've made in the last five years have been wood on wood drawer slides. My desk drawers that I use 
multiple times every day. They, they slide in and out with the slightest touch of a finger. Um, the drawers in my, uh, my dresser, even when they're loaded with all the clothes in the world, they still slide really nicely. Um, it is, you, you don't need drawer slides. Um, they're expensive, they're a pain, they take up space. Uh, just, yeah, I, you don't need them. <laughs> so that's what I do. Um, now, there's that, really a personal preference. And, um, some people really, really like drawer slides, and that's, that's just the way it is. So um, That's the way I am. I'm a little weird. Just ask my wife. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? <laughs> They'll rat you out in the chat, don't you worry. <laughs> They're on my side. I was trying Most to do my job. Are. You're the reason people are here. Let's see. Colton asked, can I apply milk paint over BLO? Um, you could. Yeah. Uh, it will adhere better to raw wood, but as long as the BLO is... Um, is fully polymerized, it should work fine. Um, I've never tried it though, so I could be completely wrong. Uh, definitely worth trying it first. Whenever you're trying a new finish, always test it out. Always test it out. Even if, I, even if it's a finish I know really well and I'm working with a different wood, I'm still going to test it out on that different wood. Uh, it's always one of those things that if you if you don't experiment with it and try it out, um, you'll never know what you're going to get. And even when I know a particular finish, um, if there's something different about the wood or something different about the application, I'll still always test it out because weird things happen. So, but theoretically, you should be able to. What's next? Poor man asked. How far down on the side of the abutments do I need to be before I can angle them back so I can finish my bed? How far down on the... Can you read that one more time? How far down on the side of the abutments do I need to be before I can angle them back so I can finish my bed? I have no idea what you're saying, man. Poor man. I'm, I'm at a complete loss on that one. Re-paraphrase. <laughs> and I will put it back up there. Sorry, I'm probably missing something very obvious. What's next? <laughs> uh, well, then he wants to know how the clock's coming. Ah, it is coming. I'm actually working on um, some notch outs. I've got it flattened. I'm making the notch for the, uh, the mechanics on it. So I've got to work on a few more things. So. This is hopefully, well, this, this needs to be done by this time next week uh, or soon thereafter. Because so. it is the, uh, the uh, making it for a friend who is then giving it to her husband for their anniversary. I'm pretty sure they're not watching, so I think I can say that. <laughs> I think you're safe. What's next? He <laughs> who shall not be named. So L.E. and some others recently want to know the best way to keep tools from rusting. Uh, I actually have an entire video on that, um, how to uh, protect wood tools from rusting. Um, I have, I'm, I'm blessed being in a basement shop, air conditioned. I have very little problem with rust. It is not something that I, I really have to think about much down here. That being said, I still have a procedure once every six months. I go through most all of my tools and I oil them and I wax them. Um, I use a three-in-one oil and I use my, uh, uh, well, I use my hard wax on most things, which I sell on my website if you'd like to see more. Um, but yeah, the tools that I use regularly, they're almost always getting oiled. They're getting used. The hand oil gets on them and that is a good protectant. But if you are in a place where you're in a garage and there's lots of humidity changes, you're going to have to do it far more often. Um, I know some people who make a procedure that they go through all their tools once every other week and just make sure that they are all oiled and cleaned. Um, but yeah, the more corrosive your environment, the more often you're going to have to do it. Uh, the, the best way to keep them is to use them. The more you use the tool, the less problems you're going to have. But uh, 
yeah, make a, a procedure, um, uh, oil on a rag, or um, the, uh, um, the wax on any large flat surfaces. And uh, it, it does pretty good at keep keeping them uh, rust free. What's next? Someone was saying that this was scheduled for 2.15 at 2 a.m. I am interested. Okay, um, so we got clarification from the poor man on his question. And inside the escapement of a wooden, oh, never mind. You changed questions on me. <laughs> Any poor man, I wanted clarification on your bed question. I'll come to that question in a second, poor man. Um, Jorge Vargas want to know, do you, do you ever get in trouble for using kitchen appliances? Uh, generally, no, because the two of us do just as much cooking. Sarah does more uh, actual meal cooking, but I do a lot more of the actual family cooking. Uh, Makes a mean frozen pizza. Yeah, I, I do a lot more of the you know, frozen pizza, the crock pot stuff, making cheese. Uh, whereas Sarah does more, we're having spaghetti tonight and actually makes it from a box of spaghetti and sauce. I was going to say, don't say scratch, I'm not that <laughs> <laughs> No, I do a lot of you know, frozen dinners and, and heating things up. And, although chili and uh, crock pot meals, I do, I like to do those. He does make good chili. But yeah, I... Most of the time I do things while Sarah's at work, so she doesn't even know. So what he hasn't told you is any Japanning or anything he does when I'm at work, so I don't have to smell it. <laughs> he has his own pots for the, um, the waxes. The waxes. Yeah. He has his own crock pot for making the paste wax. Yeah, I have, we have seven crock pots in the house. Four of the seven are dedicated to waxes and oils. Yeah. So Anytime I'm, you see me cooking with a crock pot in the kitchen, it's 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 something that's dedicated to the wood. Yeah. Cooking. So uh, that's kind of how we now. Occasionally, he has to scrub the top of the stove off from the. Occasionally, I have to do it like all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. That wax for your um. Yeah. The, 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 the straps is a mess. Thank you very much. Yeah. There's a big splotch because I had to do some yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. I'll clean it up soon. <laughs> That's the rule. If I make a mess, I have to clean it up. <laughs> Keep working on me. <laughs> Anyways. Question. Next question. Um, okay. Thank you, poor man, for clarification. The inside of the escapement of a wooden... Oh. It is related to the plane. Okay, hang on. The inside of the escapement of a wooden plane is lined by the abutments that they hold in the wedge. I need to get under that to clean up the bed so my iron will sit properly. Okay. Yes, um, to get in there, I would use a float. Um, what I use, let me grab some of these. Um, where is it? There it is. I have a couple floats that I uh, use for that. And so this is actually an eighth inch so it's an eighth inch thick float. Uh, this one is actually from Lee Nielsen. It's one of the only Lee Nielsen tools that I own. Mm, very nice. Um, this is an old one. Uh, this one is actually with a cross cut pattern um, that makes it really nice for, for getting into that, uh, that cross cutting um, setting. But this allows you to get, this one is uh, a little bit more than an eighth, um, but it allows you to get into that, that thin space. Um, if you don't have a file, uh, if you don't have a float, you can actually use a file that has the, the side teeth on it. Um, just make sure you're not pushing down too much into the bed, but it allows you to get tight into that, uh, that space where the wedge will fit. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what you do. Um, use the side of a file, or if you have the money for it, grab a float. Uh, but a, a file does really nicely. Actually, for most of my planes, I used files until uh, the last couple of years where I've been able to afford getting a float. Happy. What's next? Let's see. Very day. James, would you share kind of a price list on planes since you've created a garage sale junkie out of me and my sons? <laughs> uh, prices are very, very, they change everywhere. Um, wherever you're going to go, their, their prices are very, very different. Here in the Midwest, it's about the cheapest it can possibly get. 
Um, you go out to the East Coast, it's a little bit more, but you might find more planes out there. Um, you go down south and they become a little bit less common. Um, you go to the southwest and they are incredibly hard and prices go up. You go on to the northwest and prices are through the roof. Um, you go to California and you have to start hacking off limbs to buy them. It's, uh, yeah, it's very, very different wherever you go. Getting price guides is, it's almost impossible because, I mean, you can get a number four that costs $5 change a couple things on it and change a few years and now it's a collectible number four that might cost you four hundred dollars um, it, it's one of those things I, I can't tell you by brand or by year uh, because there are so many different variabilities in it that yeah you, you can't do that <laughs> it's one of those things you just have to learn by, exp by experience there are a few people who have attempted to try and make comprehensive um, price guides, but usually they, they fall very, very short of, of being comprehensive. Um, so yeah. <laughs> and, and you really can't even tell by, by brand because uh, most of the companies made them for a hundred years or more. Uh, and you start running into the problems of, you know, between these years they were good quality and they're going to be more expensive and then they started getting the, the post-war years and the quality started to go down and those you can buy much cheaper. Um, and so it's a, it's a very, very different thing. So, sorry. What's next? So, sorry. Jay Sting had asked what how do you convince your his wife to allow to woodwork indoors it's awfully cold here in illinois totally can <laughs> empathize with that one um back rubs well then you've got a bill that's due um <laughs> <laughs> that's the bill that's always due <laughs> past due whole. past due anyways um I mean, we compromise in our basement the way our basements. Like you originally had like half the shop space because yeah, we actually like uh, a third of the space. Yeah, but um, we found creative ways to store things. We actually got rid of a lot of stuff too, which is amazing. With as often as we moved, and I don't know. I guess I just knew it was important, and that's quieter. It's a lot quieter than power tools, and I don't know if non-woodworkers realize that. I mean, the loudest thing in the shop is usually his clogs. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, occasionally if he's working on a big project with a lot of wood curls, that will occasionally trail into the laundry room, but it really doesn't track through the house or... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I know a few people who do uh, woodworking in their kitchen or their dining room. Um, and, you know, as long as you're making curls and you know, big chips, you take the time to regularly clean up rather than just leaving a yeah. mess. It actually doesn't take that much to to keep it contained. Um, so, yeah, it's it's one of those things where you know communication. That's what relationships are all about. The more you communicate, the better your relationship will be. And I kind of had a compromise because James was the stay-at-home parent, so I had to be willing to let him have a man cave of some. <laughs> sort but look where we are now so tell your wife you just never know <laughs> what might happen if you get an indoor shop anyways I that was longer than i planned to answer that question <laughs> where are we at um tom angle asked why do you like tay tools is it because of the corporate color <laughs> that might have something to do with it uh no it actually one of the things that I, I like about his methodology, uh, Mike is very good at picking the tools that have a good balance between quality and price. He doesn't sell high-end tools that cost crazy amounts. And he doesn't sell the absolute cheapest junk. He sells that, that nice middle ground. And that's, that's the stuff I like, to, I like to recommend because, yeah, it's going to take a little bit more than the really high-end costly stuff, but it's more cost efficient uh, but it's not the cheap stuff the harbor freight stuff that is is really trashy 
Um, he does a very good job of, of finding that middle balance. Um, like Narex, Narex is a very good company for that. And that's the reason why I have a lot of Narex stuff because they have a good balance between quality and price. It's not the best stuff on the market and it's not the cheapest junk on the market. It's that, that middle ground and I like that. Um, and so that's, that's why I have a lot of stuff from his. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've done a lot with, with Gramercy and uh, Tools for Working Wood, but they tend to have a lot more of the, the high-end and artisan stuff. Um, and that's just not quite me. I, I know a lot of people think that I'm all about the artisan woodworking, but I'm really not. I'm about the, the fun of the woodworking, the, the time spent with it. Um, and so the, the Tay Tools system seems to fit me a little bit better. Um, so it's... Just kind of a personal preference, but I, I um, systematically, and you know, systematic what's what I'm looking for, uh, philosophically fit better there. <laughs> so does your budget. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joke ass. No, and, and for those, for those yeah. of you know, uh, you know, Mike occasionally sends me something like when I did the, uh, the these things. You know, he said he sent me one of these. So, oh, you gotta try these out. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of gimmicky, but then I tried it out. I was like, oh yeah, and then I bought all of them. Um, so I spent my money on these, and then he sent me one. Uh, but occasionally he'll send me something that I'm like, yeah, I don't use that. And so uh, there's, there's quite a few things that, that I've been sent that I don't I don't show off because they don't fit my workflow or they're not something that I'm interested in in, in, uh, in showing off. Um, and there's some things that he that he sent me, and I don't show them off just because I don't use it. And then every now and then it pops up. It's like, oh, oh, I can use that here, and that, that's when it then works into the shop. But um, I'd say of the things I've gotten from Tay Tool, it's probably about uh, three quarters of the things I bought and a quarter that he sent me. Um, he tends to send me the the the, the things that are kind of. Um, the introductory drug, and then I go and buy the set. <laughs> He'll tempt me with something and know that I'm going to jump at the rest of it. <laughs> so, Mike, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Anyways, all right. Joe K asked, what are your favorite woodworking books slash authors? I actually don't read many woodworking books. I, it is a very inefficient way of gleaning information for me. Um, I rather call up people who I trust and work with and bounce ideas off of them. Um, I, I watch a lot of uh, YouTube and uh, I follow um, several other things um, like uh, the, the Hand Tool School. Um, the things that Shannon does are absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I learn so much from him. Um, I'm part of the, the Woodworking Guild, and I've gotten several projects through that, and I'll, I'll follow along. Yeah, a lot of it's power tools, but a lot of it, it, it it's that, that same idea of functional joinery, and I'll bring that over into what I do. Um, I, I, I don't, um, I actually don't have any magazines um, other than, um, um, oh, come on, what is that name? Oh, the one, the... The, the, really artisan. the pretty one? Yeah, it's, it's not like Is that magazine. Tenon and Mortis? It's, it's like a Mortis and Tenon. Mortis and Tenon. Um, yeah, he, it's more of a journal than a magazine. I think that's that's about the only reading that I do, but that is that is absolutely phenomenal. Mortis and Tenon does. But they only send it out job. like quarterly. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's only by, I think it's only. It's every, not a lot. Two, two times a year. It used to be once a year. But actually books, um, when I first got into it, I read a bunch and there's not many that I really recommend because I didn't learn that much from them, just because that's the way my brain works. I, I don't, I don't gain a lot of information from reading, um, and that's opposite for my wife. She's all about the reading, um, but for me it's very different. So I, I can't recommend very many. Yeah, but I can't deconstruct things 3D in my brain by just thinking about it. So <laughs> everybody has their strengths. What's next? Darren Mormon asked, aside from making BLO, which brand do you recommend? For BLO? I'm guessing. Uh, for BLO, the, probably the closest thing that I have is the tried and true. Uh, they call it Danish oil. I talked about it a little earlier, and I really like the stuff. It's, it's, it's just about as, as pure and real as you can get. It's, it's as close as I, 
It's as close as I can get to this and buying it. Um, and I've actually thought about just buying that rather than making my own, but this jar has so much history that I, I could have a hard time parting with it. So I might have to put the, their stuff in here just to keep the jar going. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually did a video recently on, on the second channel there. Um, I compared a bunch of boiled linseed oils. Uh, and that one was one that really surprised me. So, yes, tried and true, good stuff. Surprise. So we're about 10 minutes left. I'm actually going to be doing a giveaway at the end. So we're going to be giving away a shirt. Um, so stay tuned for that. What is next? They're all lamenting the fact that we have not reached a mom joke. <laughs> but neither Alan or Tom are here and they're usually the ones yes. who instigate so y'all blame Tom and Alan and tell them hey yo what's up okay this is on the house ooh a free mom joke what do we got why should you never trust a train why they have locomotives <laughs> Ah, that's free. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Um, Fly Fishing Chief asked, is the buck saw a rip saw? No, it's cross cut. Um, buck saws are originally designed for bucking logs. Um, and you have a saw buck, which is actually this cross member device that you set the logs in. And the buck saw then bucks the, the logs, which is actually cutting them into about 18 inch long chunks that you can then um, split into firewood. Um, so the buck saw is designed for cross-cutting logs. It's a very quick, efficient um, cross-cutting method. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sharpened for cross-cutting. You would not want to rip cut with this because you can only rip cut so deep. And if you're rip cutting with big te teeth, you're going to need to rip a lot more. Oh, did someone just super chat? Because the light just turned on. Aaron did. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> Thanks, ASDFA. Aaron. <laughs> What's ASDFA? I think he was just, oh, just playing. Blah, blah, blah. I got it. Nice, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> All right, Aaron. You ready? What's, what's Aaron's mom joke? Do you know why I'm going to start collecting highlighters? Why? To mark my words! <laughs> okay, fine. You didn't like that one. I didn't even get a smile. Okay. That was that's bad. It's bad. All right, fine. <laughs> Aaron deserves better than that. You know what? Oh, see, now I floor to revisit fun. <laughs> oh, fine. See, I we, I spent my good one for free. That was the problem. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Some of these are better when you read them than when you say them. <laughs> okay, hang on. Should I do the giveaway while you're reading? Oh, I'm not as prepared as I thought thought I was. Oh, this is so sad. This is what happens when I go on vacation. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so we're going to do a giveaway for the shirt, and this is the, uh, the Wood by Right Venn diagram. So we have dad, jokes, woodworking, Wood by Right, you know, it's a mixture. So maybe we should do another shirt in pink and have mom jokes, woodworking. No, 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 no. We don't do the Disney reboot we are original. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to do that, I, if you may have noticed, I've been, oh, I've I'm finding with a these, good joke um, all night. And the first person that tells me what these are for um, will uh, will get the shirt. So, yes. Well, Sarah, search. I owe me. Aaron a better joke. This is, uh, <laughs> okay. this is I don't I'm know that that's with. appropriate for this. So. What's, what's the joke? We have some youngins in the audience. I don't think I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. I just don't know that's all appropriate. Uh, well, you want to give me a question, will you? Yes. 
thought I was prepared. So Carrie McJung and some others asked, can you show a picture oh, wait, of... Dan just asked a question with the super chat. Oh, Dan. Oh, oh, sorry, Dan. Okay. Where's this air stuff? Oh. Dan said, other than practice, what tips do you have for sawing next to your line, like sawing dovetails? Um, practice. More practice. Um, <laughs> usually the problem is people over controlling the saw. Don't grip the saw. Don't hold it. Let it loose in your hand. Let it flow. Um, and it will, if the saw is tuned well, it will go right down the line. Um, <laughs> don't, don't try and force the saw into the cut. Um, that's usually the, the, the first main problem. After that, it's really just more practice. Just, you know what? You know, those micro adjustments, tiny little bits to make it go back in. Uh, those, uh, those are things you only learn with the, the muscle memory. So. Gnome templates? No. Handles templates? That's close. Not quite. Not a shim. Oh, they're throwing answers out. Yes. <laughs> I was like, why? Hot dogs for shooting play? Nope. Nope. People are getting close, but uh, not quite. Okay. Someone watching may get this joke. What Ooh. do you call a girl in the middle of a tennis court? A girl in the middle of a tennis court? What? Annette. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, let's see. There was one that was close. And Janet's really close to that with her name. Dwayne Larson, really, really close. But I want something even more specific than that. Oh, I'm glad you're paying attention to that. There, something to throw into James when Why he Why do woodworker oh. ignore the piece of pine board? It was too naughty. That was good, boy fishing, Chief. That was good. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Silicone forms, no. <laughs> okay. What concert only costs 45 cents? What concert only costs 45 cents? What? 50 cents feature, featuring Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good one. Okay, you guys are getting really close. Yes, these are scales for a handle, but oh, I want to be oh, very specific oh, oh, about oh, oh, oh. what handle. Check the bottom. Yeah, that. screwdriver handles, but what screwdriver? There's a very specific screwdriver that these are for. You didn't even tell me the answer that uh, for specific. If you watch other YouTube channels, you may have recently seen what these are for. Gosh, don't look at me. I can't give you the answer. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell another joke because I know we've had several super chats, so I, I'm behind. What do you call a sold-out demolition derby? What? A smashing success. <laughs> hey, there we go, the poor man. For the hand tool rescue. Hand tool oh. rescue. He's actually making a screwdriver, um, and so I'm actually making the scales. Um, and he, he just started selling them, and so I bought one. I'm very excited. It should be coming this week. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, um, so if you haven't seen Hand Tool Rescue, um, he's, yeah, he's the guy who makes uh, these. Let me pull mine out here. Um, here we go. And uh, he makes these, and they're they're so stinking cool. I use it quite a bit when doing tool restoration. So he's making these massive, perfect handled um, screwdrivers, and I'm getting the scales for them. So I'm going to make mine with pink scales. It'll really drive some people crazy. But yeah, let's do one more question. Um, so uh, the poor man, um, send me your information. Actually, I think I have that. I just need your shirt size, and I'll get you one. I will send an, oh, an email. I was like, what is that? Or, you know, if you have a shirt and there's something else from my store you'd like instead, let me know. Maybe I'll do that because I, I, think, I, I think I've sent you another shirt. But if not, um, send me your shirt size and I'll send it. No send. Oh. Yes, the perfect handles. They're, they're kind of cool. So I'm getting excited about this. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's do one last question and we'll wrap it up. All right. And then I owe Aaron a better joke because... Aaron is right. That was pretty sad. <laughs> um, let's see. Carrie McDung asked, can you show a picture of your wood slides? We had a couple pictures or a couple questions regarding wood slides since you don't do the drawer. Slide. Oh, um, 
Well, if you, I, I really can't right now because they're over there by Sarah. Um, but if you go and look at the, the desk drawers, because um, I have a series where I made videos for the desk and then I made uh, the drawers underneath and soon I'm going to be making a surround to go above the desk that I can put printer in. Um, but when I make the drawers, they are, they're basically three quarter by three quarter inch wooden um, shaft piece. So it's three quarter inch by three quarter inch by however long you want the drawer slide to be. And there's a three quarter inch tall by three eighths inch wide groove that the drawer then slides on. Um, and it fits in there. Uh, the other way is you just encapsulate the drawer and it's called a piston fit drawer. Um, and so the, the wood actually has a corner on the bottom corners and a corner on the top and it just slides in and out of this piston fit. Um, with a little bit of wax on them, they, they slide perfectly. As long as it fits on them, they're, they're very, very good. So. Or if you want to go back and I have a, a series making a dresser for Sarah, um, I have those. Um, I think I have a video specifically in that for piston fit drawers. That one's a very old video, so quality might not be that amazing. So what's the last mom joke? She's reading through the joke book, trying to find that perfect joke. She's giggling. I don't know if this totally makes up for it, but it's the joke I have right now. What is a boxer's favorite part of a joke? Punchline. Ah. <laughs> well, on that note, we'll wrap this up, and uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we'll probably be. I'm, I'm wanting to start doing a series of. Uh, I want to do the joinery window again, so maybe doing uh, some of those joints um, because it's always kind of fun to go through through individual joints. So we'll hopefully be doing something like that. If not, uh, we'll see. So I'll see you next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time, and we'll have you more fun. Same wood by right channel, same wood by right time. <laughs> so I think that'll do it for now. That's what you get for watching WandaVision last night. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Do you?